Hi, you guys. This is Ginger Cook with Storytime. And Storytime is where I either tell you some interesting things that you might want to know about art materials or art stuff or tell you a bit about my life and some of the things that have happened to me. That's, oh, it's, every story time could be any subject, but sometimes we try to put it in the titles to get a sense of what it might be. As I paint a painting, now these paintings have already been sold. These are not tutorials. This was, story time is not meant to be a tutorial. It's just join me in my studio. I have a lot of paintings I've been commissioned to do, and we thought we would share the process with you. Uh, on Mondays, every Mondays at 5.30 Central Time, we do a tutorial on YouTube, step-by-step -step tutorial, and we have over 400 videos on YouTube that are tutorials. Check our playlists. All right. So that being said, let's get started, John. I'm on a uh, 8 by 10 canvas, and the underpainting is brown. And I'm going to go ahead and start painting this as I, I tell you a little bit about the, the, the last couple of days we've been talking about um, uh, um, the business of art, OK? That's, that's what the discussion's been about, is the art business. And, and it is a business. And in the couple of videos we've done previously with this and with the bait shop, I told you things that you might want to um, you know, keep an eye out for, kind of, kind of pay attention to um, how you as an artist might feel if you go from amateur to um, uh, you know, a painting of painting to try to sell the artwork. Okay, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about art. Uh, I'm going to talk about art shows. Um, what uh, I think I need a bigger brush than this. It's all right. So, what um, usually in most most areas they'll have like uh, art clubs you know acrylic painting clubs or there's an artist group somewhere uh texas lone star artists they you know, there'll be art clubs and then in the side of the clubs there'll be art shows or maybe there's a state fair and you're going to enter the art your art in that and there's categories for beginner artist advanced professional and professional is if you have sold a painting or two. They, everybody has different rules. And art, sh art shows are an interesting thing because um, what judges look for in art shows are not necessarily what someone might look for to buy a painting. And you're going, well, what do you mean? Well, what I'm saying is, is that when a, a, a customer is coming in and they would like to buy a painting from you, they want something that's uh, going to go over their couch or, you know, maybe in the bedroom, maybe it's a small painting, they might be willing to buy it, and maybe it's going in the kitchen or the bathroom. But they're not looking for avant-garde, the latest uh, kind of edgy stuff. They're looking for something that kind of makes them happy when they see it. They can identify with your art, and they want to hang it. But a lot of times, art shows get very subjective, and it really depends on the judge. And the judge, uh, a lot of times people will, they'll usually they get a professional artist of some kind, maybe an art teacher in the area, or they've got somebody that you can probably look up their artwork online and try to see what that is. And what you're going to find is that uh, chances are the judge, the, the judge there that's judging your art, does not want paintings that look like hers. A lot of people make that mistake. They think, oh, I'll do something like the judge. She'll like it because um, it's a lot like the kind of art she does. But um, that's not necessarily true at all, OK? In fact, I can pretty much tell you profoundly that that's just not going to be, that, that won't be the case. So, um, so then it says, well, OK. So. You know what? Sh what should I paint, or should I enter the art show? Well, first off, understanding that, depending on the judge, one judge may love your artwork, and another judge may hate it. Well, you can bring yourself open to a lot of hurt feelings entering art shows with your art, 
If you're a new painter and you want to just get crushed completely, go enter an art show. Uh, because if you win one time and then you don't the next, you're thinking, well, I failed, I've lost my touch. It has nothing to do with your touch of anything. It has to do with the fact that um, uh, you, um, you were painting something that didn't resonate with the judge. Okay? And art, again, art is subjective. And you may see a painting that wins that you think is quite frankly horrible. You can't for the life of you imagine anybody would hang it, yet alone um, put it in their house. I know. I mean, I've been there with you. You're going, OMG, how on earth did this piece of junk ever get in, a, get in the show, yet alone an award? So again, I, I mention this because It's a good way to get your feelings hurt, get your, get your blood pressure up, get hopping mad. Uh, a lot of times if you feel like, particularly if you feel everybody's just, you know, what's the expression? I've been robbed. I've been robbed. Um, I remember I started painting acrylic paints when I was uh, uh, 18 years old in Aspen, Colorado. Uh, they were very new medium. It was a very new medium. And um, the, um, the galleries weren't interested in acrylic paintings. And nobody knew anything about them. They wanted oil paintings. They weren't the least bit interested in any of my acrylic stuff. And even in the art shows, I didn't understand enough about art shows, about what made a painting win and what didn't. I mean... How does that work even, right? And so you can appreciate that um, it's a, it's, it, it's, it can really be ego deflating to enter an art show and you know the judge doesn't like your painting or doesn't pick your painting or something like that and not understanding why. So we're gonna kind of clarify today what it takes to be an art show, things you should know about selling your art we're just we're going to continue this i think this is a good series and um for those of you who are new to story time um i've been doing this for a lot of years and i've had a lot of experience i've you know you can look up my bio on the website if you want to know a little bit about me if you're new to us and understand that um uh, back in the 60s, I got married in 1965 uh, to Cinnamon, Cinnamon Cooney, the art sherpa is my daughter, and her dad, Colby, um, uh, is who I, who I was married to. I, I like to clarify that because a lot of times um, people, um, you know, they get a little confused. Well, who's, who's John? Who's Colby? Who's George? <laughs> George, George? George was my second husband who I stayed married to for almost 24 years. Colby I was married to for 23 years until I realized oh, there was no prize for staying, you know, not like I got a trophy or anything for staying married to him. And there, there really wasn't an upside that I could see. So we got a divorce. But in um, all those times, I'll, <coughs> oh, excuse me, this whole time, I have been painting acrylics off, you know, sometimes there'd be a year or two, maybe I had to take it off because I was, I think the year I was selling cars and there's a story time about that. I don't think I did any painting or if any, hardly any, because I mean, when you're working that many hours a day, it's really hard to um, uh, think about painting. Yeah. So, um, and during the time that I'm, as I'm painting this, this remember, this painting is not a tutorial. It's already been sold. Um, and uh, and the, uh, the um, opportunity to get a painting like this for your membership ended the um, January 1st. So if you had been thinking about, oh gosh, I wanted to do it, and if you, if you missed that, then we're sorry. We... Um, a lot of people took us up on this, probably a lot more than I thought would. And um, we pretty much decided this was sort of the one and only time we're doing this, as, as, as far as I know now. That could change, but 
It doesn't seem too likely, does it, John? No. So, all right, so getting back to um, putting your stuff in art shows, when, and, and let's just get down into this too. Let's talk about copying art. Because when you do an art show, they don't want art that you've been copying off of YouTube or, you know, copied from, say, somebody you saw on, somebody else's art you saw on Pinterest. They, honestly, they don't, nobody wants that, right? So, um, they want original your stuff, original your stuff, yes? Okay. And... They don't have, I guess that they don't have, I don't know, it depends on the art show, but they want your work. And so uh, if you've been taking lessons and you're, um, you know, you're painting some, you know, like for instance, that you're in our academy and you're painting, you know, one of my tutorials, you really don't want to enter those in art shows. That, you could enter something in an art show that you got my help with. If your own stuff, maybe you sent in a photo or something and you wanted some help with the painting and you wanted to put it in art show, I've certainly done that. But just so you know, you really don't want um, to... Um, uh, let's put a little yellow with this. You really want it to be your work, okay? Your original stuff. And I'll tell you what, that's like somebody taking music lessons and then saying, well, we're going to have a recital, but guess what? It better be a piece you, you learn to play. Now, you're just learning to play the piano, okay? Yeah, don't have any clue about it. Just go, go with me on this, right? You've just learned to play the piano. And um, now you're going to have a recital, but it has to be a piece you wrote. Well, nobody does that, but they sure do it in art, and they're they're very, uh, you know, it's almost a shame in a way because, uh, you know, they don't want to see an old dead artist like uh, say a Van Gogh. They don't want a copy of a Van Gogh or anything like that. They want your stuff. So chances are, if you're learning to paint, I would just not enter any art shows. Just stay out of it. You know, don't don't set yourself up for total disappointment. Um, and if you're you're entering one of your uh, YouTube lessons or one of my tutorials here on YouTube or something, um, or one in the academy. Uh, quite frankly, if you enter those, you're kind of not playing by most, most rules. Now, there may be some exceptions to that, but I would say you're probably not pay playing enough by the rules of, of this, okay? So, um, that being said, when you enter an art contest, they want to see, the judges want to see um, something. Like if you're painting a lemon, they want to see something about a lemon. Any, if you're enter, particularly if you're entering as a professional artist, what can you tell that judge about a lemon that they haven't thought of? Because, of course, by the time you get to a professional artist, you ought to be able to sit down and knock a lemon out with good, uh, doesn't matter how good you painted it, it's a lemon. That's not very interesting. But, now, now stay with me on this, if you were painting that lemon for an art gallery and somebody loved this painting of a lemon that still life you did, wanted to hang it in their kitchen, they wouldn't care that you were telling them something about a lemon, that lemon they had never thought of. They're happy how you thought about the lemon. They have maybe have thought about lemons like that. Love the idea that, you're, that you painted one and they're happy to buy it, okay? So keep in mind that the difference between um, art show art and the stuff that you want to sell is um, oftentimes very different and also depending on the show but for instance like on a state fair for instance it may be a, a county fair that may not be as strict they just may want to see a nice lemon and they might give you a prize for that even if it wasn't something the judge hadn't seen before it so depends on who the judge is and um that is a, that's a huge thing. Who is the judge, and um, and what's their thing? So, all these things are just—they're not hard and fast rules. They're just in general, 
this is my observations of life. How's that? Does that, that seem fair, John? These are just my opinions, you know? Okay? Not the pin. I don't have a sponsor. I'd say it's not the opinion of the sponsor, but we don't have a sponsor, so they're just my opinions. All right? And I, and I, I don't mind telling you they're my opinions. So, but uh, this, is, this is from long years of, of life experience. Um, also, it's generational. Uh, and I say, what do you mean by that? Um, if your art, if your art, um, if your art judge is say under thirty and maybe been to art school, um, they have a tendency to want to even see more avant-garde stuff than maybe your painting. It, it so depends on. Uh, it really just depends on, um, again, I can't say this enough, how the judge, I, I can remember who the judge is. I can remember leaving a local art show back in the 90s, thinking I did this, did this great painting, and I didn't win anything. I was so angry. My God, is this woman blind? This is magnificent. You know what? It was a piece of crap. That painting was a piece of crap. But at the time I painted it, I really thought it was good. Okay, sometimes we're not always honest with ourselves about what you what we've painted. Yes, so I say that too because um, you kind of have to, you know. Uh, while it can be deflating, sometimes what you painted wasn't all that. So taking art lessons and understanding, just I'm just going to win it. I'm going to make stuff up. If you didn't have a a reference you just made it up not a good thing it's nothing to be proud of people I, I see this all the time I made up this painting and I'm so proud of it uh, yeah okay um, references are good I'm not doing any of these paintings here that you guys like so much everybody's been commenting on what they like um, I'm not doing any of these without a reference I have references for everything we do and we spend hours getting them. We don't just um, spend a long time getting the references for this art for the artwork we do. And depending on on who we're um, t teaching, if I'm teaching on YouTube, I'm going to change the difficulty and the type of painting that um, I'm teaching as opposed to something I might paint myself at another time. Make sense? So it, again, so you're talking about art shows and we're talking about your entering art shows. And um, what I would do was go to some art shows and visit some galleries. Just when you go to a, another city or you're traveling, go to an art gallery and look and see what they're hanging. Take your local ones. Don't don't tell anybody you're an artist. Let them think you're a customer, and they'll be nicer to you. If they hear, if you tell them you're an artist, they think you're trying to get in their gallery, and they're just going to ignore you. Make them think you're a customer. You know, carry your best Gucci bag or whatever you got. Personally, I don't have anything like that. I think it's a total waste of money. But if you got something like that, bring it. Right. Let them let, I'll let them think that you're. Um, um, You're going to buy something and just wander around. Let them tell you about the art and why they picked it. Why? And then go to some art shows and uh, go to some museums. Um, take a t museum tour. You can learn a lot. When John and I were in Amsterdam, we signed up for a, a mu museum tour. And it was the thing I liked about the museum tour was that the uh, the um, tour guide was extremely knowledgeable and knew stuff I had never heard of. I knew stuff he hadn't either, but still, that's not the point. He knew stuff and we were looking at some of these older paintings of, of, of people in the 1800s, um, the, some Protestant and Catholics, and they were portraits of the women. And depending on 
their lace, you know, there's a lot of black and white and lace. And he, there was a whole, a whole history on, on why they, why the women dressed the way they did. And one, one kind of dress stipulated they were Protestant. Do you remember that uh, Catholics got married in white dresses, Protestant in black dresses? Wasn't that it, John? Um, Catholics got dressed in, you know, got married in white dresses and Protestants in black dresses. Yeah, it goes back to the olden days. Yeah, when you go back, I mean, you can learn, you can have such a good um, uh, experience just going to museums and learning, and you're going to learn a lot from that. Take the art lessons. Take the art lessons. We do something called personal art coaching, and I'm going to push it because I have seen the results when people... Um, when people do that, okay? Absolutely see what that does. And it makes such a difference. Because you can't learn everything in a day. The reason they have art museums is because this is sort of tricky stuff. It's learnable, but it isn't just something that you're going to sit down one day and decide, oh, I'll do it. You know? Um... Some people think, well, I'll just do some abstracts. But you know, even abstracts have rules. They do, light and dark and all that stuff. Um, they, they absolutely do. Now, the, the abstracts have gotten kind of a bad name over the years because there was a time uh, during the 50s when the Communist um, Party uh, Russians were uh, trying to um, destabilize uh, the art in America, and their, one of their tricks was that they would, um, there was a lot, there were some abstract artists in those days that got very famous, and um, what I had heard from uh, Jack White in one of his books, we talked about how they would fund certain paintings that they, need, that, they that weren't good. Now, I don't know why, what the psychological reason for this was. Um, Apparently that was something that was done, and um, uh, and so a lot of abstract artwork that went for hundreds of thousands of dollars really was just garbage. Honestly, um, but that being said. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but there are some beautiful abstracts. Abstracts that follow light and color and design. Jackson Pollock, even though he threw the paint on the canvas, actually understood light and design and pattern. His artwork was wonderful. But a lot of people, um, you know, might say, well, I wouldn't pay for that, or that's junk, or I don't get Van Gogh, and that's okay. Spend some time in some museums, maybe look a little bit, uh, give yourself a little bit of a... Um, a chance to explore art, maybe something you don't like. What is it that some people like about it? Um, you know, I, I don't care how much music I explored. You're never going to get me to like rap music. So I mean, again, it's in the eye. It gets pretty personal at some point, doesn't it, John? Yeah. You know, what I mean, and, I, I, and John and I are not music. We, we're as ignorant to music as people. Visual we're visual, not audio, but. Um, yeah, John gets stopped all the time. They think he's somebody famous that just got old and had disappeared off the surface of the of the planet. Not that you're old, baby, but you know what I'm saying, right? Maybe not, but. No. Uh, <laughs> all right. So. Um, that being said. Um, where am I going with this? Again, art is subjective. So who knows what kind of judge you've got in an art show? Who knows what that person's background is? Maybe they're the cousin of the, of the gallery owner. They don't know the first thing about art. Maybe they're a professional artist and know a lot about art. Um, but again, but if you want to just... Um, you know, if you want to sell your artwork, th again, they don't care that it was a tutorial. And we tell people, 
Uh, Sid, Sid and I both tell people that while we, you can't make prints of our art, you can, for instance, you know, uh, take one of our videos and, um, on YouTube or in the Academy, and you're more than welcome to, um, to, yeah, to paint it. Absolutely, more than welcome to paint it. So, uh, let's see, one sink white. Then it comes down to, and if you want to know the kind of things that people buy, we covered that yesterday in our, uh, our show, yesterday on the, on the, uh, the Bayou painting, okay? The past episodes. Yeah, so you, you, want to, you might want to check back on some of these other episodes that we've done. Before, you know, um, might be something you might want to consider doing. Okay, so all that being said, um, let me just get a chalk, piece of chalk or something here. Okay. Sometimes I just have to stop talking and concentrate on what I'm painting. Sorry, but just, sometimes that just has to happen. There are flies on the wall. There are flies on the wall in my studio. Again, repeating, this is not an art lesson. It's just a painting I'm doing. Those that have been ready to paint it and get ready to ship out. We'll get a bunch shipped out on Monday. That's the goal, right? That is the goal. Should be able to. It's only Friday. Get three to four coats on. Good to go. For those of you who, are, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Tech Bear channel, please spell it, John Form Tech Bear. T-E-C-A, it was The Tech Bear. The Tech Bear. Yeah, the Tech Bear, because there's another Tech Bear out there. But the there's a Tech Bear, and John's, he's got a couple thousand followers. What I do, a Tech Bear channel I use mostly to do my personal art coaching. All right. But um, yeah, we also use it uh, for things like, uh, you know, he's done videos like on how to pack your paintings if you're going to sell something. You got to ship it out, and he's got some wonderful videos on how to pack your acrylic paintings, so that you don't, um, um, you know, get them damaged. How to pack them successfully? Yeah. So let's see, we were talking about something here. Oh yeah, um, art shows and stuff. So all right, so we've kind of decided you're not, you're gonna, for the most part, enjoy an art show, go to a few. You can boo and hiss at, the, at who won or who didn't. Um, then there's a matter of, you know, maybe you'd like to display your art somewhere right, and you don't want to put it in a gallery. Um, sometimes a local business might be willing to let you hang their art um, in their place um, because um, 
They're what that you and you pay for the walls. You buy the you buy the wall space from them because their wall space isn't doing anything for them. So if it's a business that gets a lot of traffic, say like a a place that mails packages, for instance, one of those kind of stores, you might find that um, your uh, uh, they might be willing to let you have a wall, and, and somebody's there to take the money from the for the artwork, and you know sell it, so forth. Um, and you'd have to have a relationship with the person, I would think. And you know that's a that's certainly a, a possibility, isn't it? So those are some examples of places, you know, something you could do. Again, we talked about other stuff in the other video yesterday about galleries and that kind of stuff, hanging your art in galleries. So we're not going to go into that today. Um, somebody one time asked me, you know, um, what about linen canvas? Do you use linen canvas? Um, yeah, linen is great, man. Who, who doesn't love linen canvas? I love Super smooth, it's really great for portraits, okay? Yeah, linen canvas is awesome. And, but it's very expensive. It's real linen. You've got to think about canvas is like, you think of a sailboat, that's what canvas is. And, um, and there's different widths and grades, just like sheets, you know, you heard about Egyptian cotton sheets and they're a certain thread count. Canvases have thread counts too. Did you guys know that? I knew that. Yeah, they do. So, um, besides the the top coating on the canvas that that is used by um, companies that sell cut canvas, for instance, you may see student grade canvas, or um, um, then they have ex you know depending on even Michaels and stores like that have. Um, Definitely have <coughs> um, different prices of canvas depending on um, on the grade of it, and the grade can it can be uh, it can be factoring in a lot of things. When I was teaching uh, painting parties, of course, he bought the um, uh, the cheapest canvas he could get his hold on, and he would buy it by the case, and he'd make a deal with say somebody like Michaels or Jerry's or something, and. Um, he, that's how uh, th then that canvas is really terrible to paint on. It doesn't want to grab the uh, the, the um, paint very easily. Um, you run you can run into a lot of problems. But with the crummy paint that we use at um, painting parties, which is really just junk in my opinion, so we get sued by painting party paint companies, but. Honest to gosh, the stuff that they used was just as cheap as you could get it and still get it to stick to the canvas. Um, if you ever did one of those and just felt like art wasn't for you because you tried it, keep in mind that they gave you the worst brushes, they gave you the worst, worst paints, and then, then you were drunk. And just, just try to imagine the, a positive outcome for that, right? Um, just saying, and it's amazing the kind of outcome I could get out of people even though that was all true, okay? So, um, uh, again, when you're talking about buying canvas, um, I always like to buy, wait till it's on sale. Jerry's uh, Artorama makes some um, uh, good uh, I don't want you to think I like those people either. I just have to buy from them because no, you know, I don't particularly like them at all. Um, and we'll have to tell you some stories about why I don't. But uh, when you, <coughs> sorry, you may want to. Well, let's just divert. Why don't I like them very much? Well, every every art store is a business. You know, we get that. But one of the things that was very distressing to me back when I, for a long time in Houston, I, I taught 
just regular in-person art classes. And I had about 12 students. And I taught on Fridays and Tuesdays afternoons. And, and I had, there was a little place in the back where, um, that they had set aside for us to, to paint. And uh, I, had, I had people that followed me for years painting with me. And, you know, and then new, student, new people would come and go. But there was a lot of, um, uh, it, and because I was an independent contractor, um, even though, now uh, let's just go back here. I was an independent contractor. But not that. That being said, um, it, you know they still took a cut of whatever I made uh, from the art lessons. It wasn't, you know, they they took, you know, they got a cut for that, right? They took a percentage and then they paid me. So the store collected the money, and then I sat there and waited for my check. And while there are other employees that worked there that were just you know, selling art supplies behind the register, would get their checks every couple of weeks or whenever they paid them. Uh, my, the store manager was constantly calling saying, why haven't you paid Ginger yet? And one of their tricks was that they would say it's, it went out in the mail and they'd postmark it and then never, never drop it in the mail. It would be postmarked like they paid it, but I wouldn't see it for weeks. And, you know, so I, I remember had somebody say, well, how come um, you don't have, you know, auto, you know, I think when I met John, he said, why don't you do automatic bill paying? And I said, well, at the time when I was working for Jerry's, I never knew when I was going to see a paycheck, right? I just, you couldn't do, had to automatically do something if you didn't know when you were going to get paid, right? And then I sold, one of the things that I've, I, I've shown you, and you'll notice that we show you the artwork in a frame, because there's nothing like seeing an artwork framed and just focusing in on that to see how pretty the painting is. And so when I was doing my uh, classes, uh, they had they sold really nice frames there. Uh, I would um, and not too expensive either; they're very price worthy. Um, I would um, uh, get, you know go find a frame, couple frames off the wall, and that, and then. Whoever I was teaching, they could see what their painting looked like in a frame, which was very encouraging, right? Because, I mean, a lot of times people think, oh, I don't know if I like this or whatever it is. And then you, you see it in a frame and you're going, oh, wow, this is pretty nice. I really quite like this. Yeah, right? So, um, uh, not unbeknownst to me, I, one time the, one of the managers said, you know, and they had like, I don't know how many, like 20 Jerry stores or 30 or something like that around the country. And I had one of the um, managers tell me that, um, that their store, and they could tell who sold it, sold the most frames on all the Jerry's was me. Yeah. And not because I was, I, I didn't get a commission on those frames. I didn't care if anybody bought a frame or not, but I wanted people to be happy with their artwork. And I think one of the best ways to feel happy about your artwork is put it to frame and see what it looks like. You can be a little bit more um, forgiving of yourself if you do that, yes? Okay. So uh, anyhow, so we'll put more frames than anybody else. And apparently, except, uh, in fact, it was, it was the biggest, the most sales except for pencils. Now what does that tell you? And I only had eight students. Um, or 10, or maybe maybe a total of maybe 25 students eventually, you know, different came in at different times. Okay. But we were selling um, frames like that. And now I, this is going to sound petty to some of you, but I, I'm a, I can be petty. John will tell you. I am, right? I can get really insulted. I can get insulted pretty easily. But, you know, they would have a Christmas party every year for their employees, and I was never invited, ever. The, the, the Jerry's would fund, fund the Christmas party 
for anybody that worked there, even part-time people who were making four dollars an hour, whatever they were paying them. And because uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of kids that worked there, that um, um, wanted, were artists, you know, beginning artists, and they could got a little discount on their art supplies, and that kind of stuff, right? So quite frankly, um, I felt a little unappreciated, and then the, the manager George Rodriguez would take me out to lunch. Uh, anyway, he felt bad that they never invited me. And he asked him, well, we should include Ginger. Oh, no, she's not one of our employees. We can't, we can't fit her in. She doesn't get, no, she can't have the Christmas party. So I know that, that that's petty. Do you think that's petty, John? Do you think I'm just, think I'm being petty? Yeah, well, apparently that did. So, um, and I can remember, um, George, when he was managing that store, was marvelous. George Rodriguez, just he has his store. He manages the store now in San Antonio, Texas. But when he was in Houston, he, I never saw anybody work harder. And I remember he um, invited me to go to a um, a big art, you know, kind of just it was like a home show, but for teachers and it was just people that had stuff for schools and Jerry sold a lot of art art supplies to you know uh, public schools that you know their art department would come in and buy and you know it was they had special salespeople that went out to just get that business not just for local artists and had that you had that there was a lot going on there and so we'd gone down to um, uh, San Antonio and um, they, because George was from there originally, he was born in San Antonio, uh, and he was like, he, at that time he was in his you know probably forties, and uh, he got up at, at six that morning, and he walked like eighteen blocks or something to where the the venue was happening to check it out before we went, all went over there. I mean, he was just the most. Um, he was just so energetic, it made me tired, you know. <laughs> and there was another gal from Jerry's, from, uh, Austin, from uh, Austin, another manager. And the two of them worked that show like nobody's business. I mean, they were just marvelous people. Still are marvelous. He didn't become unmarvelous just because I don't see him anymore, but still, right? He's a hard worker, but I don't think even he was appreciated that much. I mean, I never... He never said, but just quiet observations from me. I think that, and so, you know, there was that, right? And then there was the paycheck thing, right? But the coup de gras, Ooh. the coup de gras was when um, uh, uh, I'd been teaching there for about four years, I think, and uh, also doing painting parties. Sometimes I was working seven days a week. I was doing painting parties at night and Jerry's during the day and teaching. It's a wonder I can still stand anyway. Um, uh, <clears throat> one of their um, executives went to, you know, had one of their accountants come and they went up to the store in, um, up in Austin. Now Austin, Texas has about that was that's one of their best stores. It probably makes the most money of any of them, because <clears throat> there's like um, I think 18 colleges and universities that um, you know could take advantage of that. Yes. So um, uh, anyhow, um, the um, he went up there and he was looking at where they hold art lessons. Okay. And he did the books, and he decided that the art lessons per square inch were not producing the revenue of, of a couple of stands holding paintbrushes or some, something else. Okay. Now, why this is important is this is what I ran into when I was selling cars, you guys, is that people like that missed, totally missed the big picture. Um, They don't appreciate word of mouth and how that works. 
in my opinion. It looks like they just didn't quite grasp that concept at all. And so what he did was he didn't, it was right before Christmas, and most of their art, art, art instructors had been there a few years. And what they did was, and the very next day, everybody got fired. You know, they were probably, luckily it wasn't me, but they were probably, they fired everybody except me and one other artist because I was selling in the, um, but everybody else got canned. And I kind of got canned. It was kind of weird. I was told that I could work under the table there and they could pay me. That was okay. They'd just turn a blind eye and they would pay me, which was actually a good thing because I didn't have to wait for their paychecks anymore. Okay? But because I was, you know, the store was making money. Okay? But the thing of it is, is that, and I have to say, that to just up and fire everybody without any notice, not saying like, and, and no notice for the students. The students were in the middle of projects, stuff like that. I don't think I've ever told this on the air. Um, but I think sometimes, now I still buy stuff from them because I like their products. You know, if somebody else, I'll tell you what, if I have a choice and somebody else is selling it, I, I don't buy from them. Um, and there were other examples of artists that had uh, been befriended by them that it didn't work out for them. So I have never, for instance, approached Jerry's for a deal with them on art supplies or anything. You've never used to know, so I never have for their frames or anything. And I won't. Because I just kind of, you know, sometimes you, remember I told you you have to look at people's track records? And even if they were on new management, it wouldn't matter to me. I just wouldn't do it. And, you know, they, I think that there's one artist on YouTube that, you know, she's a, um, um, they, um, still, she's got a lockery or somebody that does pretty well with them. And I'm sure they've treated her nicely, but I just, you, you, you know, it's funny. There's a difference between, um, men and women in business and that men will often go into business with somebody and have a bad experience and 10 years later they're back in business with them and somebody says but didn't they screw you over um, why are you still um, talking to them and men, men are much I read this in a book somewhere women don't forget <laughs> women hold grudges okay that's fine for you we're not playing with you anymore right that's what women do and rightly, and rightly so. I mean, what's, yeah, I guess we do hold grudges a little bit. I, I held a grudge kind of in, in that sense that I think it could have been a different experience. What's that? So, and again, there, I've met some very nice people that I, you know, everybody's always been nice to me there for, for the, far, the part with the firing part, but in um, and the, and the paycheck part and all that kind of stuff. And I love George Rodriguez down in San Antonio and he and I are friends. And he did everything he could to make sure I had paychecks. But, you know, um, and you know, and it's interesting. I've said this before about um, doctors. You may have the best dentist, dentist in the world, but the $5 receptionist will make a break you. So what if they had just paid me, like they said, and the owner went out of town, and the secretary got busy and never mailed it? I don't know why the check wasn't, um, wasn't, wasn't mailed. They kept saying, oh, no, it's in the mail, you know. But, you know, once or twice, but every, every time there was a paycheck, there was a, you know, that th none of them were ever on time that I can remember, okay? So at some point, you're beginning, we can't, you know, with the secretaries all screwing up, and I tell you, George would call them and say, "Look, what's going on with Ginger stuff?" and you know that kind of stuff. And um, sometimes it was the whole crew that wasn't getting paid; it wasn't just me. That everybody else's check was late too. So um, again, uh, we all have reasons for why we do things or don't do things, and um, uh, again, they have a. They have fixed their website, I'm happy to say. I, I do like the picture frames they sell and their products. There's nothing wrong with the products. And um, what was done to the management? 
it's really management. And one person can mess it up for everybody. See what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It can, and one bad experience can mess it up. Because um, sometimes in a, store, in a company like that, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. You know what I'm saying? They just don't. So back to um, back to art shows and things like that. I can remember being in a gallery in um, in Houston, and um, the lady that uh, owned the gallery. Um, uh, well, I won't even go into that story. You won't, you know, I won't even tell you about her. But um, I met the ex-wife of the artist, and they'd both immigrated into this country, and um, you know, she got dumped for better opportunities selling art. You know, whatever. That was her story anyway. She just got dumped. But um, <sighs> OK, so back to um, meanwhile, back at the ranch, right? So I would say that um, uh, if we're back to art supplies and stuff. John and I obviously look for the best deal. One of the things, one of the things I tell you to do is that three main art supply people is my daughter, was well, not the main one, but she's one of them now, but is Dick Blick, uh, Jerry's, uh, Cheap Joe's, uh, believe it or not, Houston, uh, Texas Art Art Supply, is one, and they're um, and. And then Jerry's has a, 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 a warehouse, um, has two. Jerry's has that, and then they have art wholesale warehouses, AWS or something is theirs. And that can be a good, that's a good deal if you have to, it's a membership thing, but if you order a lot of art supplies, you do get a discount. I don't think we've, have we ever talked about that, John? Art, art warehouse from Jerry's, have we ever talked about yeah. that? Yeah. We just, you know. Special work I used to do that with Mark. He'd buy his pencil for stuff for that one. Yeah, from that one. So there's um, a lot of different ways to get art supplies. What John and I like to do, and I, I, just a cautionary word here, is that we we um, will we'll maybe start a cart going, and we'll total it up for, and then we'll t then we'll go to one of the other places, and uh, put everything in the cart that we have in the first place. And then we'd like to see what it's all going to come to, OK? And then what shipping is. And then I always tell people, I've said this in other videos, but I always tell people it's important that you um, check. I don't care if you're not going to use the paint for another six months and you just bought it because it was on sale. Open the box and check the inventory, because how many times have we found where they were missing something? Something was missing, right, John? It wasn't in the box. And one of the things that we, Jerry's used to, they may still do, but they used to sell this gesso that didn't like to be shipped very often and, and had a tendency to uh, occasionally, they would just sort of erupt like a volcano and you'd open a box or something and the, um, uh, the, the, the white gesso, had, it was all over the entire box. Yeah, seriously, I know. So uh, just, just, a, just a little word of caution there about that, right? So back to painting uh, art supplies and all that stuff. So I would tell you that our, our experience has been that student art supplies um, are, are more work than you can imagine. Uh, because the, how, how, 
how your paints work is the um, uh, your your um, your acrylic paint has pigment in it, um, and the and the, the stronger the color or the more steadfast or the brighter or the longer lasting color depends on the pigment. So people are buying the pigment and if, um, so there's a tendency, you know, honestly, if they're trying to get, do a student grade paint, they're not going to put in the materials that you would get in a, um, um, yeah, you just wouldn't get it, right? Down. Yeah, and so what you find is that you just, you know, when one lady said, but I just, you know, I'm just painting and you're just being mean and I can't afford the good stuff. Well, at least okay, get, the white. get at least the white, you know, and then as you replace tubes, don't buy everything at once. Uh, you can't get, apparently, you can't get the Salvador paints anymore. Apparently not. They're not available to, uh, right now. You know, they were a tremendous, you know, great bargain. As far as um, you know, buying buying paints, they were ter they were terrific, and uh, and the reason being was because they had the same quality paints. They were little tiny jars, and so um, y you know the little tiny tubes here, like like this, like little tiny tubes like this, and John and I took a whole set of those. With us to Europe and um, in Australia, and in Australia too, and did I did like I don't know forty paintings just out of one set and some white, yep. you know, and and out of and one. Luminous rose. Yeah, right. Luminous rose. And luminous rose and some of those other things, right? But um, uh, yeah, no, you guys. Um, Just get my little colors here. So back to, you know, back to paints and getting your good art supplies. Again, look for sales. Um, I remember when I was working at Jerry's, the, um, there were these brushes that they had. Uh, maybe I've got one I can show you. Might have one sitting here. Uh, probably down in this big can down here. Let's see, I think I've got one. Let me just look. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think this is one of theirs. The no, this is this is a this is a Robert Robert Sim, Simmons. It wasn't this. We'll see which one was theirs. I'm looking for the um, the Jerry's. Um, here it is. This is the Pro Stroke. Now the prices range when they and the thing from ninety eight dollars, and when they put them on sale, it got down to like ten or twelve. Do you know how hard it is for me to give you give anybody ninety eight dollars a brush when I saw it on sale for twelve dollars last week? So um, a lot of times when you're looking for stuff, and see, um, I always thought people could just buy it on sale and turn around and sell it on eBay for for twenty and probably make a profit, right? But nonetheless, when you're um, when you're looking for um, brush deals and stuff like that do look for the sales because it's just you just don't know what you're going to find right and and i was just shocked that and that, that and, when, and usually during back to school they put their canvases on sale um which is you know kind of nice too now we talked about before i'm kind of letting this dry for a second right we talked about it before i want to show you something um, I talked about in art shows. This is one of the tutorials that we have in, on our um, in our academy. And you notice know, it's a gallery wrap canvas. You see how it's painted on the sides, and then you see it's got all this canvas here, right? 
And these are the thick stretcher bars. And they're, they, they're done so that the, you see how in here, it's, it's, they're beveled so that the, the canvas is touching the wood anywhere. Sometimes on a, on a big, big um, canvas, on a less expensive one, you'll see where the um, stretcher bars, if you paint on it, they will start leaving a mark. And you've got to put like cardboard back there, but ones like these you don't, all right? But um, I would say always bring a tape measure to the art store with you or when you get your canvases. Because so believe it or not, um, if you measure from corner to corner, you should get the same measurement or the canvas isn't square. And I have seen firsthand, here, here's the, you can kind of see it where I didn't paint it. Um, these bars warp and cave in like a camel's back uh, for whatever reason. I've seen them warp. And so you want to make sure that when you set them on something flat, there's no air underneath on all sides. Okay? Because it, it, once, it's, um, once it's warped, you're screwed. You have to restretch it on something else. So I want to include in this video, and when I'm done, I will add it to it, but I want to include in this video a, um, um, uh, one of my most popular things I ever did was uh, on YouTube, and it's, the people watch it all the time, is how to stretch a fine art canvas, how to stretch a canvas. If you ever find yourself in a position where, gosh, everything got wrecked and you have to restretch it, um, it's, not, it's not a tragedy. You can do it. It'll be all right, okay? So, uh, um, I mentioned that because um, you you may want to um, just be aware that that's that's a possibility. Okay. So. Uh, back to my road and uh, buying good art materials, look for sales. One of the things, if you're a member of our acrylic painting club, Judy Guitar, which is one of our moderators, searches the web every week for deals on frames and paints and see who's t selling what. And I mean, she's a great resource. You may not have time to, um, to do that yourself, but Judy does that every week. And she will be happy to and she, she's really um, on the ball on that as far as, um, uh, you know, what you can expect on um, uh, She mentioned that there's some sales going on right now. Yeah, yeah, Judy keeps up with that. And, um, you know, so a lot of times when you say you can't, you know, can't afford, um, you know, the pain or something, and sometimes you just can't, and that's, we get it, you know. Um, uh, the, um, Sorry, I'm thinking about something. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of becoming a little bit better shopper. Um, I'm leery, and sometimes you can find somebody will have a sale, you know, like a home sale or some garage sale, they'll have paints, and if you can get them for the cheap, that's all right. Um, sometimes paints don't do well over time. They just, um, if they're frozen, for instance, if they ever happen to get frozen, you know, um, chances are that they, um, the paints will be um, not very good after that. So uh, these are all things that, um, let's see.
you've got to watch out for it. Though I tell you what, I have used to keep my paints in my car, in the trunk of my car, the ones I, I taught with, those ones. And um, uh, even though it got good, it gets freezing here in Houston. I never had them freeze, John. Isn't that interesting? Though I did have my car stolen, and the insurance company wasn't interested in um, paying for my art supplies in my car. Was that Geico? No, that was um, another insurance company that dropped me after that, too. Because I had, you know, a car got stolen. No, wait. Was that Geico? Yeah, it might have been Geico. Yeah, because I, I was with them at the time, and they were really good about, you know, giving me the money for the car, but the homeowner's insurance had to do the had to do the um, the car, and I had a pretty low deductible then. And Anyway, they didn't want it. I think, as they said, because I sold artwork, I was a professional artist, and therefore um, my stuff in the car didn't count. Um, Now this little brush, I want to mention it. Judy gave this to me, and usually I don't use it, but this is a silver Monza, quarter inch, and it is lovely for this. So thank you, Judy. It's got the very short hairs. It's got very short hairs, and you can see where... It's got the crew cut. It's, it's, um, it's pretty effective for these trees I'm doing, right? Yeah? So, um, you just never know, do you? So back to back to art supplies, galleries, and buying paint, and buying you know, buying good paint. Um, I would say buying good brushes is is good too. I buy these silver brushes. Uh, again, one time she gave me some, but I've never gotten any deals from her. John, John and I pretty much decided, Reese, you know, that we weren't going to um, get caught in the trap of you know being sponsored by anybody because then. Even if that, with the, for instance, uh, Salvador Paints never uh, sponsored sponsored me. They never, we never got any money from them. Never got any deals on the paint. Occasionally they sent me some paint, I think. But um, yeah, they gave us paints occasionally. They gave us paint occasionally, and they what they did was they gave away paint for a long time during COVID. They gave away paint. Um, We'd have a drawing or something? We'd have a drawing and somebody would get paint. And then they had trouble shipping to Europe and stuff. And then their agent, the lady that we talked to, was in Israel. And she just disappeared. 100% disappeared. Just 100% disappeared. And then we didn't have any way to get hold of the company by itself. We didn't know who else to contact. We, didn't have, we had no way to contact anybody. So that sort of people say, well, I understand why you, why you dropped... Uh, it wasn't uh, by choice. We really liked the paint. Yeah, because we, li we like them. We still and, use um, the paints. My daughter had told me that she didn't think it was a good idea to use them, even if we liked the paint, because then other paint companies wouldn't want to help us. But they weren't helping us anyway. No, nobody cares. We're too small. You know, we're just too small. Yeah, Nobody cares true. what we do. Um, so that was, that was sort of an interesting... Um, uh, sort of interesting, but I, but they did put my picture on the box, which I thought was really nice. Didn't you think so, John? Yeah, I thought so. They put my picture on the box, and and I, you know, that was a co company that I was happy to let them do it because I we, believed them in what they were doing. And we liked their paint. And, and I when they first paint. came out, they had problems with their white, and we told them, you know, help them get a little bit better. Still didn't get a full pigment, but was a lot better than when it first came out. Yes. The first batch we got from it was like, it was a yeah, really Yeah, and they made some bigger tubes and so forth. They, yeah. they took our advice. But I tell you what, at one time Jerry's had said that they wanted advice. They Trust didn't me, really they did don't want advice. <laughs> they never wanted advice. Um, I don't know how many paint rollers, uh, paint tube rollers I went through um, one time to... Um, 
let's see, that's got to be, that's got to come up higher. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's just go up higher a little bit. Uh, do that later. Uh, paint, paint rollers, uh, uh, that, you know, you, you tube rollers, these things. The where you roll things. up your paint, these things. And my favorite kind are plastic hand and then the metal. All metal I don't like. And these gears have to work. You see, they have to work so that when you put a paint tube in them, like this, so when you put a paint tube in them, Now you say you don't like all metal. That that new one we got is all yeah, metal. Yeah, and that's all metal. But this, but of this kind, I've ha I had one for like twenty years, and we the gears. Jerry's was getting them made overseas somewhere, and they um, they kept um, you know I, we went through all of them in the store one time, opened all the packages, trying to get a couple to um, to work. They were cheaping them down on them. Yeah. It happens. So that was um, that was sort of an interesting experience too. Yes. So uh, let's see where else. Uh, thought I'd get this done in one day. How long have I been at this, John? I don't know. Not long enough. It's not done. Yeah, but I mean, just curious. Mm, maybe an hour. Okay. I'm putting the first coat of varnish on. Okay. So John is not anywhere near the computer to answer your questions. Not at this time. But if you have any questions, if you and after the video is over, if you'd like to leave them in the comments, I'll answer them next time we do one of these. Yes and yes. What do you think? We well, can certainly ask for that. Absolutely. You know, we'll uh, we'll do that then. Yes. I'm going to tell you, nothing like a coat of varnish really brings a painting to life. It really makes the colors pop out. If you have a good brush, you can just tap the color on. You don't have to actually paint it on. You just tap it. Think, even though we're we're talking about art here, and even though we're um, and I'm painting this, not these are non tutorials. We do know that there's a lot people can learn from watching these. By the way, just just is now. Just watch what she does. It could be a new series. The yeah, Silent Artist. All right, where else do I want to? Go with something. Okay, so um, I think I'm tired of fiddling for a little bit. I'll do something else that's not fiddling. So I can, if I'm not fiddling too much, I can keep talking to you.
And over the years, um, I've come to love brushes and then not love them. Things change. Um, so love-hate relationship. Yeah, sometimes you'll find something you really like and then sometimes you decide that you don't. And it's okay, you know, and there's different brushes for different things. And there's always, you know, we're always learning as artists. We're always learning. That's important to keep in mind that there's not, you know, I guess if once you get to be a master of baseball or, you know, something, maybe you're not learning so much. But it's a, regardless of your age, you can always learn something as an artist. There's always some, something that can be learned. And um, that's important. Uh, Yeah, you constantly got to be learning. And even when you think you're the best it can be. Yeah, you get better. You see, you can always you're, get just, better. you're always seeing more. That that's the tr trick. You're always seeing more. And whatever you're seeing, there's more to see. Okay. So, okay, so, so far we've talked about going to art shows and not getting your feelings hurt. If your painting isn't recognized as the masterpiece, you're sure it is, okay? May or may not be, doesn't matter. May or may not be, just really doesn't matter. Liz will be making some notes for me in, the, in our chat for questions. We had one come in that says, are you considered a tonal artist? Um, uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Um, one of my most interesting artists I ever ran across, she has passed away, she was from Texas. Her name was L Lily Dahl, so last name, D-A-H-L. And if you ever wanted to, I'm gonna recommend an artist for a video. She had a video on, on just that very thing. What's a tonalist? What's a colorist? And um, back when um, oil painters uh, were uh, before paint tubes, okay? Back before paint tubes, the um, uh, the artist would have to uh, mix the the oil paint into the oil, the pigments, okay, themselves, and then they would put it in um, a pig's bladder and sew it shut. And poke a hole in the bottom. Squeeze out your paint. And that was how they got their paint, okay? And... When the paint tube, which was invented in 18, about the, around the Civil War time, around 1860, it was originally invented for watercolors, so it originally was used for. By the time Van Gogh was painting, Vincent, uh, everybody was using uh, paint tubes or oil paint tube. Or that was pretty much the standard. People were, were using that. But before the paint tubes, okay, before all that, uh, artists were, um, you know, having to, you, they were painting inside because you couldn't, you, the paint tubes, the, the pig bladders didn't travel, okay? They just didn't. So, um, So what they would do and how they would paint that, and I know this takes a long pause, that's why I'm thinking about what I'm painting and telling you, but what they would, um, what, they, what they realized was that um, that in order to get the values and everything, they would do a, almost a 
black and white sketch of it, grayscale sketch, and then they would um, uh, paint over it. And so, and and they were going for tones. They were called tonalists. Well, I don't know if they were called tonalists until they were colorists. But then when the when the impressionists, you know, got their little French easels out there into the into the countryside and started painting things, they noted that shadows could be purple and not just a darker color. And that there was um, color in nature that could be back in the in the in their paintings. And so they started to see that and they put that in their artwork. And those people were then called uh, colorists because instead of just going for the hum old, humdrum old, um, you know, toneless artwork, which is lovely, but you know, they, they, they had to have a north light because uh, that's, that regardless of the time of day, it, was, it wasn't casting shadows on their art. That's why people want north light in their studios. But today we have electric lighting. It's really absolutely silly to sit there and say, well, I'm going to have an art studio. I'm going to have north light. Well, nobody cares, right? It's just a total waste of time. You just get light the room. But I guess you could. You know, maybe you could have both. What do you think? And then, of course, they didn't paint after. You know, they didn't want to paint by candlelight because that just sort of um, kind of messed everything up, right? With the wrong color. Yeah, so, and this is important because uh, art changes and Impressionism didn't just become about color then. Impressionism, a lot of times people think Impressionism is like some sort of sloppy painting. Not true. Sometimes it was just as detailed as any of those tonalists were painting. Okay, absolutely, as detailed as that. But they were adding other colors that other people, that the toneless were not. They were, you know, maybe it was a purple shadow, not just a dark shadow. And they, they saw where, depending on the time of day and, you know, what was influenced, and they were reflective lights and all that stuff. And so they, um, They, they, they were able to see the world differently and people loved their artwork. Well, not in the beginning, they didn't. Not in the beginning, nobody liked it at all. Um, uh, they just didn't, okay? Well, they didn't understand it. They did, they, they, yeah, but you know, they went, they had something called a salon in um, France that was a big art show. Again, we're talking about art shows. And getting in the salon and being invited to have your artwork in the salon was a huge deal. And of course, they weren't asked in. So they started some of their own shows because of that. All right. So um, it's fun when you look at the history of art and you, and you see where all this came from, okay? Why do we like the art we do? What, what made the Impressionists famous? What kind of style do you do? Um, and one of the reasons in our art academy, in our art school, paintingwithginger.com, one of the reasons we teach the old dead artists, and you'll see it on YouTube too, um, is because you can learn so much from them. Now you're not thinking about, well, should I put this here? Was this the right thing to do? Was it the wrong thing? Should I put that? Now you're only thinking about, um, was this, um, do I like this? Am I, um, did I get the right color? That's all you're thinking about. You're not deciding whether it was a good idea to put the leaf there or that. You don't have to make those decisions. You just, the only decisions you have to make are um, how you painted something. No, I'm sorry, I have to dry.
Okay, let's get some of our lighter greens out here. Another question, why did you use tape for the edge of the building but not the windows? Uh, because it's a loose painting and I want it to look mechanical. Yep, I knew that answer. You want the structure to be sound, but the building, the windows, the, the extra things, a little more relaxed. Okay, so where were we before I got confused about questions and stuff? What were we talking about? Um, okay. We were talking about Time canvases. For, you know, your canvases and, you know, what the artist told us. Somebody asked if they were told us. And, um, You know, all these are just such personal decisions that art, artists make. You can be a totalist, tonalist, or, or, you know, I personally, I'm a, you know, people often refer to me as the queen of color. And they say that with great love because they love the colors in my paintings. And I think I've never mentioned um, about having this uh, man buy over 40 of my paintings, all under different names. I said that in the in the... Um, that was yesterday's. You alluded to that one. I, I said that in the... Um, um, it, yesterday, uh, in one of the, in the video on the bayou, and... Um, I don't understand how I couldn't think it's the same person, though. Or did you just paint him differently? You paint him different enough that he couldn't tell it was the same person painting him? Um, now all the things were really, really different. And one of the things he had me paint was a, was a, was a he wanted a painting, a big long painting, like, like 60 by 30 or something, um, big huge. And it was, a, it was a, all the things that he, 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 um, he manufactured from uh, railroad cars or whatever it is this guy made. And um, so, uh, I, I, I did, you know, if you've ever never heard of Bev Doolittle, she was a master at, you know, kind of disguising things in art. And she was somebody I admired. And I used, even though it was an abstract, I, I had hid all those things in the painting that he did. And then I gave him a map of where they were. Once you, once you had the map, you could really see them. It was rather brilliant, actually, if I do say so myself. And um, once, once you had the, um, you know, once you had the lay of the land there, once you, once you knew what, what it was I was doing, then you, um, you were good to go. 
but uh, up until then, let's see, now I am uh, the fortunate person who has all these browns here. Let me see. Here's some acrylic ink. So, uh, anyhow, um, he had that in his boardroom. And people would come in and they had to guess what the stuff was. And then, and then the others would, you know, it, it was a big hit, this, this, whatever this was. It was, was a very big hit. Um, these little cups I get, that they're from guacamole um, <laughs> dip comes from Walmart. And when John cleans them out and they make perfect little containers for stuff like Flow Ink. They're great. Um, you have to be careful with Van Dyke Brown because I'm just going to do a drop of this because it's very shiny. And uh, I once did a whole um, a whole underpainting of Van Dyke Brown. It was like trying to paint over an ice skating rink. It was so um, slippery. John, I'm getting ready to take a break. Uh-oh. So just so you know, so you get into a stopping place, you can do you can do some show and tell or something. Let me get this last one here again. But I'm on this new medication, and I can not sit here for hours on end anymore. like I used to be able to, like yesterday. take over? Yep. I can quit hopping up and down? Yep. Okay, let me just leave that there. I will leave you with John for you guys for a minute. I want to take a quick break and I'll be back. And uh, here's some of the other paintings that we're doing. You can show, show them what you're varnishing too if you've got something you're varnishing. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, your mic's turned off. Okay. I'm taking over the helm. Probably need to stand up anyway. Well, yeah, I'm going to think. Let's see how long you've been going here. Uh, buck thirty. Are you expecting something? I don't think so. Get all this stuff out of my way. Lovely painting, though, isn't it, guys? Come on, nicely. I'm going to show you how I varnish. Problem is, we're going to be on a hill, so we'll see how this goes. And I have to zoom out the camera, but you can't see anything. You can't see wonderful Edward. Here we go. All righty. Now this is a proton board. I use the Ultimate Varnish Brush by Silver. I'll zoom in on it here, I'm zooming in. Won't focus on it, focus here, focus my hand. No, you have to take my word for it. That's what it is. 
Now typically I'm on a flat surface. Let me see if I can flatten this out a little bit. If I can get a little bit about like that, that looks like about that. Give me one second here. Some of our fancy cups. My leveler. A couple more. Too much. Too much. That's pretty good. Okay. And I do, we're using, I use the high gloss varnish, gloss varnish, satin varnish, or matte varnish, depending upon the subject. I will pour a little bit. No, I'm still not level. See how it's running down? So I'll hold it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this around. Now, in the olden days, we wanted to match the, the brush stroke because we were using their varnish medium. They, they, no, they no longer call it a varnish. It's more of it was a gloss and varnish medium. It's now just a, a medium. And that, now with this, it's because it's so liquid, your brush strokes don't even show up. And then it's really light pressure as I go over it, after I get it all covered. And that, that is the first coat. Now I typically do three to five, depending upon the look I'm going for. If you don't do a bunch of them and just do it here, you still have a lot of the canvas coming through, which keeps it kind of a matte finish, semi-glossy matty, which is sometimes nice. But Ellie said she wants this one nice and shiny, so we have to do what Ellie says. This is for her. And then I have a rack over there. You have to wait three hours between coats. At least three hours. The old stuff you had to do within 30 minutes. But this stuff, wait at least three hours. And they say if you vigorously brush stroke, which I've, you know, I've, I've tested that on you know, garbage canvas. I've never had a problem. They said it clouds up. So let me go put this over there and I'll get another one. And I'll be right back. Can't see what you're saying or doing. I don't even know if I'm coming through. That's all part of the mystery. I have a rack on the wall, which I'll take a picture of sometime, that holds all my paintings as they're being, as they're varnishing to dry. Oh, it looks like the queen's coming back already. Did you see who was at the door? You have to go downstairs. It's the fiber optic people. Oh. And they're, they want to do something outside. Requires decisions. All right. Put my microphone back on. And I'll turn mine off. We're trains, we're swapping again. We're tag team. Okay, let's make sure you're on. Okay, where did my painting go? It's up on top. Okay. All right. Let me just make sure you're on. I had to run down the stairs to answer yep. the doorbell. <sighs> they didn't say anything about coming today, did they? No, it's supposed to be next week. Well, the, the inside's next week, the outside's this week. So. Let me drop my brush in. So the anyhow, guy's waiting for me down there? We're getting new fiber optics cable for upstairs, which is a big deal. And we're saving like, what, $100 a month or something, too. Uh, it's a good deal. But it's not pant here. Well, the key is it's going to be a lot faster. It's going to be a lot faster. All right, I'm going silent mode. I'm going to keep talking to you here. These are these Archisto pens I'm using. Okay, that's fun. Let me get a highlight on this tree. 
Uh, let's see what other color can I use? Whoops. It's too big. Okay. So that's that old adage, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. Okay. So far, so good. So you want to come up here like this. All right, so far, so good. Yes and yes. All right, so back to, I hope that was entertaining what John did um, with you with the varnish. People do it so wrong. I had a student who's a really good artist, and this was back when I was teaching at Jerry's, and she had had a commission uh, that she was doing for um, uh, a, a very rich man uh, here in Texas, and he had loved her artwork, and she did like a 48 by 60 painting, and um, she varnished it all in one direction, and the glare on it was so terrible. It was such a detailed painting. It wasn't just any small thing she did. It was really uh, detailed, and uh, unfortunately for her, um, she almost had to repaint some of it because the glare he had where he was hanging, the glare was so bad you couldn't see the picture. You can just avoid that. Well, couldn't you do a mat over it? Yeah, just to, but your brush strokes uh, show. That was the weird thing. Your brush strokes will show, and you've got to really watch that. Um, when you're painting something like that, because you're, you've got to think of the, the, like a groove in a record. So um, we try to do our underpaintings very neutral, uh, brush stroke wise. We don't have everything just going up and down or back and forth. We try to do them where, um, regardless of what I decide to, to paint, paint on them, because John does a lot of these in advance, um, doesn't really matter. We've got, um, uh, I can paint anything on them because I haven't made grooves in the, on the underpainting where it's going to interfere with whatever I'm painting. That's just something people don't think about. We'll tend to have a tendency, what we do is we have a tendency to, we don't have a tendency, this is what, exactly what we do. I don't know why I'm using the word tendency. What we do is we, for instance, if we have some leftover paint after a session, and it's, you know, the Stay Wet palette maybe is not going to keep it longer. Uh, what, we'll, what John will do is he will find, you know, maybe brown or there's, usually I have some brown left over, some yellow or blue or something. And then he will um, paint the underpaintings with that. He'll maybe take three or four canvases that are kind of, that they're not doing anything this week and we don't have this. And then he will go ahead and, and, and paint those, um, uh, those dark, you know, and, and that way when I go to paint, like for instance, today I had a brown underpainting. I might have picked blue too, okay? Just somebody was going to ask that. Why did you pick brown? I don't know that I deliberately picked brown. It just would, I could make that brown work. Does that make sense? I could absolutely make the brown work, so that's why it was uh, picked. But you do need, when you're painting with acrylics, you do need, um, you need a surface for the paint to grab on because it, um, it, it, it grabs the color. Uh, one layer grabs another. And for instance, w one of the reasons you don't put um, paintings back to, ba you know, touching when you're storing your artwork is because they can glue together and you may never get them apart. Uh, and as far as a pick picking canvas goes, uh, Jerry's used to sell, like, you know, th th there are um, canvas boards, quality, the canvas boards I'm using from Jerry's are just top quality, but they didn't always, weren't always that way. And Ampersand was a company out of, um, 
out of Austin, Texas. They started with these two college guys, and they developed these books. They're wonderful. They developed these these painting boards for watercolors and acrylic artists, and each board has a different kind of surface. And um, so one of the disadvantages of watercolor is that when you go to frame it, frames are very expensive, and it, you do have to kind of frame it. But uh, if you frame it on a, and glass is expensive, it's very expensive to frame watercolors. And so, uh, 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 anyhow, they, inv they invented this um, really good canvas board that uh, expensive, but then it will allow you to, for instance, take a watercolor that you painted on the board and uh, um, and frame it for a lot less money and still have a beautiful watercolor, okay? Um, you didn't have to put it under glass or anything like that. It could stay on there. Probably would want to varnish it or something, but other than that, why, you were pretty, you were pretty safe on that. So, um, oh, John's back. How was that? Is it okay? What they want to do? Yeah, Okay. Isn't that interesting? Well, anyway, so the, um, anyway, so ampersand, so Jerry made something called Yes Canvas. They may still sell it. And I'm often told, and they said it was good for watercolor, it was good for oil, it didn't matter, you could just, it didn't matter what it was for, it was good, you're gonna love it. Okay, and who doesn't want something like that, right? So, uh, they, um, you know, I was working at Jerry's, and so one of the fun things about teaching at an art supply store is if, um, if somebody needs a color, um, it's right there. You know, what you really need is this color. And so a lot of art supplies got sold because it was right there. It was easy to buy. Got to move that. It was easy to buy. And um, uh, you could um, just pick it off the shelf. And if you didn't like it, if there's a problem, whatever. Okay. So they were selling the ampersand. Uh, and said they had the ampersand if you could kind of compare prices, that was expensive. And then they came up with this Yes Canvas that was good for acrylics and watercolor, whatever. So one of my students uh, oh. bought some. What, what's, what's the matter, John? I gotta zoom back in, I gotta zoom out for me. Hmm, yeah. Thank you, Liz. You know, bought some, and okay, so the difference between oil paintings and acrylics and watercolor, one big difference is when you're painting acrylics, you don't, um, you, you don't have to keep what you've got. If you really did something and you don't like it, by golly, it's a small thing to just um, paint something else. Does it make sense? You don't have to, you don't have to keep it. So, um, uh, uh, anyhow, that um, I said you can. What you can do is paint over it, or if you already have a dry coat on your, um, um, if you already have a dry coat, then all you need to do is just. Um, uh, what, you know, if you paint something on top of that, like for instance, suppose you had a really good landscape and you were going to throw a horse in it, okay? Well, um, all, she, all she would need to do then is, um, is uh, paint the horse on, and if it didn't work, you could just take a wet sponge or something and wipe. You could erase it. If it's, everything's dry underneath, you, can, you could erase it, okay? And um, which, is a, which is a nice feature, don't you think? Yes, when you think about it, it's a great, great feature. 
So uh, anyhow, um, I said, and you know, and I think I may have told you the story of how I've um, been so upset with a painting. I've actually gone under the kitchen sink and put the garden hose on it, or the kitchen, not the garden hose, but the kitchen hose, right? And um, uh, uh, you know, erased it, just washed it right off, and went right on back onto painting. Yeah. Why not? Well, she did that, and guess what happened? <laughs> it had dried for two days. I said, make sure it's dry. She did that, okay? And um, her whole painting just washed down the sink. All what? of it. The underpainting, all the layers just washed down the sink. I kid you not. <laughs> what was she painting on? This called Yes Canvas that Jerry's had come up with. Kind of trying to... Um, you know, beat ampersand at their own game. Well, we can do that in China. We get it done made. It'll, it'll work. It'll be better. You know, that kind of thing, right? Yes and yes? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't have to say, you know, I don't have to imply motives, do I? To just, do you understand what I'm saying, right? And, um, so, yeah, no, hers, her and, which, which brings to mind another sort of sad story that I, I let myself get into. Um, there was a time when I owned my own Jake Clay machine, which is a, a mint that makes prints. And it was like, it was like a $40,000 clay machine. At the time, it was like $40,000. Um, when my father died, instead of buying a car or something, I invested in my art stuff. I bought this machine. And so then you end up buying canvas for it, obviously, because you have to have special canvas, special coated canvas for the ink to stay. It's not going to just stay on any old canvas, okay? So you'd have to have that. So um, uh, I was running out of canvas, and there was a big art show coming up with my agent. There was a thing down in Houston or something, and she needed... Um, she, she needed some paintings, and, and I was stretching my own canvas anyway, and there was a bunch of this canvas left over that I wasn't using. It was for the Jaclay machine. And I said, well, you know, I can paint on this. I know it'll take the acrylics. And, um, you know, and, and short of a flood, it's, it's not going to be a problem. And I remember Cinema at the time saying, I don't think you should do it, Mom. I'm going, what, what the hell? Is there going to be a flood? I mean, wh wh why would there be a flood? It's downtown Houston. Is there going to be a flood? If there's no flood, it should be fine, right? Because if you thought that the Yes canvas was a little perilous, that that stuff was, you know, it was fine unless you, you know, it couldn't take the garden hose treatment, right, or the sink treatment for sure. So, um, I, Cinnamon's so fun, my daughter. She's very psychic, right? She really is. And she had this moment. She says, Mom, she says, you shouldn't paint on that. It's good. Just, just don't. Why take a chance, right? And I'm going, well, it's here. I don't have any canvas. You know how it is, right? It's going to be fine. Why not, right? Well, uh, my art agent had brought it in, and they had not hung it on the wall. They had laid it against the floor in a corner, and they were going to hang it the next day. And that night, we had an unexpected rainstorm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't think this is going to and, have a happy and the, ending. Um, and the gallery flooded up to its windows. The stuff that was hanging on the wall was okay, but all the paint on my um, gorgeous painting was down on the floor. It slid right off the canvas just like... <laughs> so what's the takeaway from this, boss? The takeaway is that don't get cheap. <laughs> Watch the canvas. Just because somebody says it's new and different, test it. Um, on most canvases, like on its canvas boards, I could, if this was really dry, I could, you know, and all of this was dry, I could probably wash off the, and not affect the underneath layer. But you know what? you got to test your products. It's not, it should have worked, right? It should have. Shouldn't it have worked? Should have worked, yeah. Should have should have worked. Well, okay. So, um, I mean, I think it should have worked. 
Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Sure coulda, woulda. Sure wish it had a. Anyway, and it was very bad for my reputation, and my art agent was going to kill me. She just said, I can't believe you did that. You just, you ruined my reputation, on and on and on. And, you know, I, honestly, they didn't buy the painting from me. They were thinking, you know, they, she hadn't sold it to them yet. It was okay. But um, uh, I, I learned the lesson the hard way, and I don't want you to have to learn it the hard way. So therefore, I'm sharing that, the, 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 I'm sharing outcomes you might want to avoid, right? Uh, just saying, okay? Uh, word to the wise, as it were. Just a word to the wise. I mean, I just, sometimes I'll share things with you because I've had it happen and, you know, just like what we told you the other day about not letting, you know, about art galleries and the kinds you want to get into, that was Kind of yesterday we talked about that. Uh, I'm kind of sh sharing some stuff that you might want to think about a little bit before you do it. I've got some rubbing alcohol here, John. I'm going to put the cap off. I'm just going to put it on the floor, okay? Wherever that stuff is in the bottle. This is my varnish. Oh, it says varnish. Well, I don't know what was. I just saw the clear bottle. My varnish. So the guys were deciding, they go, okay, so we're just going to go right into the house here. I go, nope. <laughs> he goes, oh, where are we going? Uh -huh. I go, here, follow me. Uh, okay. He goes, oh, well, we have to run a cable or we can go, they're going to go through the backyard. I go, yeah, go through the backyard. Nice people. He goes, so far, everybody's been installed so far, absolutely loves it. Well, it, it beats guess, the competition. And we know who that is. John was trying to figure out our cable bill the other day. Well, that's a freaking nightmare. And uh, with this Xfinity. And we got to tell you guys that, you know, uh, you practically have to be a Harvard graduate of law to understand what on earth they're selling you. And then it's this price, but then we're not counting taxes. But then there's this price, and then there's the... Um, but now if you do this special... Just you in case this, something... You have to be bundled. Everything's got to be bundled. Everything's just bundled. So yes, it's true. You don't have a home phone, like one of those... Remember those home phones before cell phones? Remember those? It doesn't matter. It's in the package. <laughs> just, that I just doesn't matter. I don't have to hook matter. a phone up it's to it. They don't care. It doesn't matter. It's in the package. Now, you know, the difference between a phone like that and, say, one from a member AT&T where you had the phone and you had a phone bill, Yeah. the advantage to having a, um, in my opinion, the advantage to having a, a home phone is that um, when, you, when you have a home phone, um, if there's like a disaster, like your phone still works usually. Where, the, where your cell phone the, might not, or vice versa. You know, it's sort of like a, a double protection. But the kind, with the cable, if the cable's out, your phone's not going to... doesn't matter if it's a home phone or cell phone, right, John? That's right. Except that you, maybe you're not being charged for the minutes. I don't know what the, no, what the advantages of, the, um, of having that, do you? I guess to say you have a home phone. I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess it's for people that don't have a cell phone or if they don't want to be bothered... When they leave, they just give out that phone number. I don't know. They don't, don't give either. you the phone or anything, right? You know, we're trying to run a business, so we have to be bothered. So, uh, anyhow, 
This is kind of fun, you guys. Don't you think this painting is turning out kind of fun? I'm liking yeah, it. We're getting, um, we're getting somewhere with it, yes and yes. I want to thank Liz Clark. She sent me some, um, what they called um, this dark green color. What was it that you sent me? Shadow, oh, Shadow green. green from Holbein. Love it. Shadow green. Great color. Can you make it? Yeah, you can make it, but sometimes it's nice not to have to make it. You don't you guys oh, think so? Sometimes it's just nice to, you don't want to have to make it all the time. Just So, anyhow. Um, sorry, I get, you get thinking scrolled. about things, and I think about five things on this painting I have to change and I have to still do or something like that, and you kind of, like you, you kind of got, I kind of lost you, maybe a little bit. All right, let's start off with. But don't worry, I'll be back. I'll be back here, so I'm gonna start painting in some poppies. That's the other thing you don't want to splurge on, is if you, certain colors need the pigment, like reds. You can almost do, um, thalo blue is such a strong color that you could probably do a, pretty successfully a student grade thalo blue, and it wouldn't be too bad. Maybe not the best, it would be, probably be okay. I don't but know. reds are a thing where you just, reds need, usually need to be over white, and you need a couple coats on them. And um, just one coat of red really isn't gonna do it. Do you have some of the uh, six by eights? I've got some six by eights over here. Okay. Behind me, I was gonna show them. But you showed up some stuff. I guess I don't need to show anything. We took a little break and everything. Well, you can show them some stuff. Then I'm gonna take it from you so I can varnish it. Cause I'm getting down to those. Just saying. Um, Can't stop this mighty machine. Like I say, I can't say enough about bright reds. Now, when Cinnamon and I were in France, we did this whole road trip looking for poppies. And um, we, we found, you know, and we, it was wonderful. We took the back roads and... Um, did you find them? It was wonderful. We had such a good time. And Cinnamon, Cinnamon is a professional photographer. Um, and when I was in France, I actually hired her to be my photographer. Um, and um, besides just, you know, for co going over there for her own painting, I hired her to take some pictures because she's so very good. And she, being an artist, she would do it. I could point out, I said, I need some pictures of that. I wouldn't have to explain how the pictures had to be. She just knew that I need some pictures of that. And, um, and she just did them, which is amazingly nice. Okay. And... Um, So she could like climb up a hill or, you know, you know, get all these really great shots that were, you know, definitely difficult for me. And so it was widely appreciated that she was able to do all that. And I remember one of the paintings, I think, I don't think she has it anymore. I think during the, it got lost in one of the moves or maybe it's still in storage, but I had done a, I, I took a lot of pictures of her taking pictures of the poppies. She'd wander out into the poppy fields and hike all over the place, and she'd uh, take those pictures, which were the ones that I needed. 
And uh, got some great photos of poppies, poppy fields. And uh, they're kind of like our Texas blue bonnets over there, okay? So uh, I did a painting for her, and I did just of her looking at the camera from behind. I kind of hunched over. Um, um, from behind in the fields with her hair in a ponytail. And it was a cute picture. And she didn't like how I did her hair. And I say this to all moms whose kids want them portraits of themselves. I said, keep in mind, I could have added 10 pounds if I just was wanted to. One stroke of the brush, man, you could have just been heavier. <laughs> There's a lot of things we can do. You know, you know. Man, it just, anyway, it was funny. Just, she couldn't believe it. She did that. But she was a wonderful add to the, um, the, um, our time in, uh, in, in Europe. And we rented a house and everything. I've talked about that, about that on some of the other videos. And her husband, um, John, came up. And for a week, and that was one of the deals that he had to come over as part of the. She had, she had a bicycle. She had to have John. Jesus, oh, Pete. Oh, I know. It was a thing, right? You think she's been glad to go to Europe with her mother, right? No. <laughs> she had to meet No. Us. We had all these conditions, right? So, but I got some great. And she was right there with the photographs. I mean, she did a great job. And um, so, you know, wasn't unhappy about that at all that she did that, but um, that's one thing I still remember. We had rented a house. This is kind of like having c coffee with ginger, isn't it? Because the subjects keep changing on you. But we had rented a house there through the Guy de France system. and. Um, We had a place in the country. And we just, it was about a, a, an hour and a half drive out of Carcassonne. And um, uh, we, had a, we had a meadow. And uh, we were right on the base of a hiking trail that took you up to this mountain behind us. They didn't get snow. It was that kind of mountain. But it was really pretty. And, all right, we have some pictures of when we were, you know how you go off ro ro roading in the United States if you're in the country or something and you'll get on dirt roads. All their off roading was paved. It was really interesting. The place had been there for so long that pretty much everything was paved, even though hardly anybody would go on those roads. So we went around exploring. I can remember coming into this, to these one woods. And um, the, um, it was all beautiful blue flowers, just growing at this particular altitude. These gorgeous blue flowers, and um, just all in these woods. It was the pretty. It was just gorgeous. Okay. Just absolutely stunningly beautiful. We got some great, great stuff, and then Cinema, of course, had a bicycle. It was bicycling around, and she. Um, and we just, you know, we traveled all over. Those were some good times. Uh, really fun. That I was, we had sold a bunch of our rental properties in Houston, and I just took the money and, you know, went to Europe and wanted to paint and do all that stuff. And been working really hard doing real estate, and was glad to go do something else. And. Uh, We we had such a, we we went we went right after after nine eleven because it was really cheap nobody wanted to fly so they were practically giving you airplane tickets you know and then that spring we went again 
and rented a house for six weeks. And it was something. <coughs> that was really something. Um, Um, and that's another video about, we'll do that another story time, our time in France with the, um, you know, when, when we, the second trip, I think I've told you about the first one with the haunted house and everything. And, and I think if you're wondering what video that is, it's Cinnamon uh, Stalker is the one where that is. John, John and I are going to take a moment and show you some stuff. If you're wondering to know what we've been painting recently. Put that up here. Um, uh, these are again our, our uh, commission pieces that were part of this whole group of paintings that have been sold. Here is that uh, people that signed up for uh, two years as a purple member got a 9 by 12. Um, these, which ones are these? These are uh, six, six, by six by eight. These are the, um, the red members. Some, some of the landscapes we've done for red members and you can see how um, intricate and detailed they were. And so we want again, uh, these are gonna be shipped out. You, uh, we'll have some photographs of these, but I wanted to kind of share that with you before we left, because they're really kind of neat, aren't they? And again, done on the Proton canvas, okay? Do you wanna show Frankie? Oh yeah, and I wanna show this. This was a painting, oh, come on you guys. Yeah. This was a painting I did on one of our trips, and it's on a, very, I found this canvas in an art store, and it's on a triangle. Couldn't think what I wanted to do with it. So we've got this wonderful frog named Frankie. And in fact, I, I never got the, the red slash through, so I'll do that now as we're talking. Um, wonderful frog named Frankie. I'll just lighten that up here as long as we're talking. And um, John and I talked about it. And so if we have any of our purple members who signed up for two years and would want Frankie, um, he's never doing Frankie again, so if somebody really had just had to have him, they could. He, I think he's really cute, but um, again, you've got to be a um, have been a purple member. Two-year purple. Two-year purple for that one. If two anybody wanted it, right? Otherwise, we we'll keep doing the size we're doing for the purple people. Okay, so we're almost finished with this. I just have to, you know, add the flowers in, and. Um, uh, Thanks, boss. This is, to me, this is the fun part. Um, going here. When Cinnamon and I were in Europe, we would drive around and look for poppy fields and old farms like this. And um, There's something, you know, that, that there's, I don't know what the people that live there find it as charming as we Americans do. Of course, if you were to be, you could just drive around Texas and find some beautiful farms too. You don't have to, you don't have to or you just go out, you know, into the countryside wherever you live and you're going to find something pretty awesome if you're looking. But, um, Believe it or not, time. This just takes a little time.
again, this is the fun detail work that ends up happening here, um, where you kind of get most of it in, and then you're uh, just you know that can take another 10, 15 minutes. I'm sorry, but just just all all in good time. So we would just. Uh, I think before we, we stopped on the talk, it got digressing on, on poppies and our trip to Europe. Uh, there's something to be said about getting out of the studio. You know, if you've got a, a marina down by where you live, try a... Um, uh, consider going out and taking some photos. You've got a cell phone now. The cell phones are as good as any camera. You don't have to develop the film. You've got a lot of leeway as far as um, what you can paint. And so many more um, references you can just get yourself. Um, but I've, uh, I've, I've often suggested, and I don't think a lot of people take me up on it, is that, for instance, if you're doing a still, if you, if you practice a few of the, of the uh, older artists, the old DGs, as I like to call them, the old dead guys, if you practice a little bit of their art, um, you know, look at how they lay the still life out. Why did they pick that? Why not just figure out the lighting and everything and do one where you yourself are um, um, you know, you've got to go look around your house, see if you, if you could put a still life that together, you know, and to paint it in the same way, it's just with your stuff. It's to consider it original. You know, take a photo, take a few photos, try to get the lighting right. Um, that's because you learn. Because a lot of times people don't know what to take a photo of. And um, I know on Cinnamon's workshops that we've done, I wanted John one time. Did you ever do that at this last workshop, John? Do What's a photography that? thing? Did you do a little bit of that? Yeah. Yeah, the guys loved it. Yeah, John was explaining. How to hit. Yeah, how to take, you know, how to take. Um, how to use your cell phone. How to use your cell phone to take good photos. And if Cinnamon, if Cinnamon does another. Um, workshop this year. I sincerely hope that um, you will consider, uh, you know, uh, signing up for it if you can, if it's in your budget. We understand it's not in everybody's, right? But um, Uh, that might be just something to consider. Probably ready to get ready for a frame here, John. No, oh, I cleaned up. I don't know who they are. What? <laughs> I love doing that to you. Yeah, you like to. You're a riot, aren't you? You are so. You are funny. What do you call a funny man? Now, one thing about it is these reds will, no pun intended, pop when they're, um, uh, when it's varnished. And um, like I say, reds are some of those colors that need to be uh, you know, several coats of color on or they don't, don't show up. Or different. you can use the luminous colors like I am going to to get a few to be a little bit brighter the front. I won't do every one, I'll just do a couple.
I want some flowers a little brighter. And others. It's an 8x10, is that right? What's that? You're doing an 8x10 right now? Is that what it is? I think so. Yeah, this is an 8x10. This would be a good one for the Jerry's colored frames. Which one do you want? Yeah. Which one, the blue one? Yeah, probably a blue one would look really good with this, I think. I'll have to dry it, but I think... I think it would look really nice. And you'll notice that when I'm doing these paintings for the um, these commissions, they're all different styles. Somebody somebody asked me the other day. I said, "I think you've changed styles." No. But um, I haven't changed styles, but I've changed. Um, I, I'm still going for colors and impressionism and all that stuff, right? For sure, I'm doing that. But I'm so the not. Look, looks are slightly different. Because you can do a lot of different styles. Yeah. And uh, so you'll, you'll see that. Let's see, Luminous. Brad, what are you? <sighs> one trick I can I like is just to rather than pour any paint out, I just have one of these pointy skewers for you know cooking. And um, I can take the paint right off the skewer. Oops, too much water on the brush. just need two coats of regular paint to show up. So what are you doing over there, John? I'm washing my brushes. Okay, John's... Okay, so you're... Um, John's washing his brushes, and I'm just finishing this up. You shouldn't be able to hear me. I'm not, I'm not on mic. Okay. The color called luminous yellow.
right, I think we've we've uh, pretty much decided that we've got it. As our road goes down the hill, I think John's gonna. We're gonna put this in a frame, and here we go. Hang on. Okay. All right, John, where's our frame here? John's going to get it ready. All right, here we go. So this is an 8 by 10. So that is that went that's that was the person that was a uh, purple, purple, purple one year, eight by ten. Yeah. Purple one year. And now look, see, these are the same from Jerry's that they sell, and you can see why I love them, right? And um, um, and why I'm, you know, I still do business with them, even though, um, as I said, they, I have reason for them not to be my favorite people. But again, I've met some of the people that, you know, own the company, and I think they're lovely. So you just, but th that's what happens, you know, when you're, um, uh, involved with, uh, um, businesses. Uh, like I said, you could the dentist at the, 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 the lady at the dentist's office could be the reason you don't go back to that dentist. That, to me, is what's so absolutely interesting about it. Um, let me just put this brush down. That was good in that frame. Isn't it pretty in that frame? It really brings all the colors out. It does look nice. Oh, Mortimer, how do you keep doing it? One after the other. I know, and they're all different. Nobody's getting the same painting. No. Nobody's getting the same painting. No, no, no. And we're still doing our tutorials for the Academy, and they're all pretty neat, right? I think I'm um, trying to decide where I want to sign it. Probably here, maybe right here along the road. What do you think, John? An angle? Yeah. Probably, in, probably in brown, maybe. I would dark brown. No, that's not going to do it. So, do we don't really? Nobody really makes a good dark brown. It's going to have to almost be. It's going to have to be black. That's all right. Not this one. Let's see. Where's my black one? Well, we, it's, it's not brown enough. So here we go. Yeah. And I'll do it little. All right, you guys. So thanks for uh, hanging out, uh, out with us on a uh, uh, story time adventure, and uh, we appreciate that very much. I got a couple. I'm gonna just do something with this chimney. It should have a a dark side and a light side. I think that kind of worked. And uh, cool. 
So uh, whoever ends up with this, I hope they love it. And we love chatting with you. And uh, we'll be back on next week with um, Monday's show. will be a live YouTube show where we'll be doing a tutorial if you uh, want to catch that. Or, or, or uh, you might want to uh, hang out for the story times for next week because I've got a lot of these paintings to do. And um, I'm happy to... We plan on doing story times Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then after a while, it may just be um, just three days a week because I've got I won't be able to keep that pace up, John. No. So it, for a while, then it'll just be three days. And then two days. And then no days. You know. Three so days. anyhow, we hope that. Uh, There we go. Uh, oh, no, we don't, because we have to do this. I know that sounds crazy, but, you know, just this, this you know how acrylics dry darker? I can kind of get that side of the house a little bit brighter than it was. And uh, all right. That's it. I'm happy. Hope you are too. Uh, I'm going to flash that baby. Oh, yeah. Could do that. Then you're done. Then brush is down. I don't think it's showing up here. I'll have to do a lighter one. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Thanks, again. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next story time. Hope you enjoyed the stories. Bye, one and all. And be sure to uh, leave us a comment about stuff and uh, what we've talked about. And I'd love to hear some of your experiences with art galleries, too. And I'm going to tell you more about the, um, we had a lot of people talk about their experience with aliens. And that's going to, John and I will share that with you maybe next story time. Bye, all. Bye.